All right, good morning to nobody who is out there. It's all right. I know you'll start filtering in eventually. I'm Daddy War Crimes. This is a woodworking show. And we are going to be continuing our progress on bookends. And these are really going to be simple bookends. We're just doing some dovetails in red oak. And I think I might reinforce that with, um, oh, what do you call those? Some, some uh, like a, a, a brace here with mortise and tenon at a 45 degree angle. I think that would look nice. But as of right now, we're still just touching up the edges on our chisels. So, get back to that. Just a minute ago, I scraped all the old wax off the, uh, off the leather. I'll try and uh, freshen it up again. Try and keep it polished on the strop. That way I don't have to go to the diamond plates as often. This one had a bit of a skew on it, so I had to take that to the plates to work that out on the last stream, which is not necessarily all the most entertaining I could be. All right, so we're going to start uh, cleaning up these pins. And try and get this um, <clears throat> fitted to the tails that we cut for it. And I'm going to go ahead and move the camera. Try and get a bit of be better angle on this. I'm just going to start in the depth line, and I can barely see the depth line because of the shadows. <clears throat> Let's see. There we go, it's a little bit better. I'm just uh, doing a little bevel right here and I'll do the same thing on the other side and then we can work work towards that and not have any tear out or at least uh, mitigate the tear out quite a bit. Kind of cutting upwards at a slight angle. These are my nice chisels. I also got the Buck Brothers for 
dirtier work, but this is the biggest of the nice chisels I got. And they might not be all that nice, but they're the, the Wood River, the house brand of Woodcraft. Which they do pretty good, so I will certainly not denigrate them. They're the best chisels I've ever owned anyway. trick to see that gauge line that just the right angle of lighting and like the tails um, with this end grain I'm not too terribly concerned if it's kind of hollow in the middle because the end grain is not going to give us a lot of glue strength Shave this down little by little. Just make sure not to get in front of the chisel. That's how you catch your fingers. And don't drop the chisel. And if you do drop the chisel, don't try and catch it. On that one once. definitely thinking that woodworking is going to be a lot more pleasant in the fall and winter. But midsummer like this, it's uh, it is no bueno. Okay, I'll get the uh, the rest of it from the other side. got to try not to get too much sweat on these chisels because they that will rust them. Have to uh, keep some oil on them too. That might help. And actually, while I'm thinking of it, okay. I'm not having an open oil can. I thought I had an oil bottle. I guess I'll have two.
There we go. Little three in one oil, light machine oil. Keeps the metal preserved. And uh, also helps it cut a bit better. Reduces friction. All right, I think that will be enough for that side. We'll flip it over later. I wonder, see if we can get maybe, give this a try just for, for grins. How's that looking? Well, that's not going to work too well because the tripod's now not balanced. Um, let me see what I can do about that. Okay, so you just stay put, Mr. Tripod. Nope, nope, that's not working. Well, you're just not going to get that clever angle, folks. So that's about as good as we're going to get. Greetings folks, whoever you are, I can't see your names at the moment. But thank you for joining me all the same. Did you uh, partake in the festivities over the, the last evening, 4th of July, if you are Americans? Up here in northern Alabama, we had a very impressive display of fireworks in my neighborhood. This is my first, uh, first Independence Day in this state. 
So I, I thoroughly approve of the massive displays of explosions. Although I did not participate myself this year. Unless you're prepared to invest a couple hundred dollars, fireworks just aren't worth it. Just enjoy what everybody else puts on. Alright, seems to be a bit hollow in the middle, so we'll call that good. come out from the other side and we'll meet in the middle now I'm also gonna have to uh, get these pins the proper size and they're not necessarily all that straight right now I didn't do a great job of cutting these with the saw but that's okay we can fix that and right now I'm not using the oil can because I'm waiting for it to uh, for the oil to kind of soak in, saturate the cloth. Just kind of looking for any high spots. Low spots are okay, it's the high spots we want to get rid of. Because these fibers are not going to compress much, so when we fit the tails in there, you really have to have enough space for them to go in. I'm going to try and be careful with this. I've been having a tendency of late to uh, split my boards apart when I'm fitting the, the joints because I'm making them too tight and I'm not uh, being patient enough to, to cut out all the all the waste that I need to so just try and force it and when you try and force it it splits in the garage during the summer you sweat your face off
Let's see how square these are. And shall we both try and fit it? That's actually not too far off. Didn't do have a, a good bit to do, so. So this half pin over here is um, a bit too wide. Very carefully shave that down. Now the uh, interesting thing about dovetails, okay, so these are the tails and these are the pins. So the pins fit inside in between the tails and vice versa really. But um, so the main force of strength is so that the tails can't be pulled this way, right? So this would be like your drawer front because you're pulling that that way, and so these are gonna be the drawer sides, which can't pull that way. So that's it's not necessarily the only use of dovetails, obviously, but it's a, a very common use, so you orient your boards that way. Now for the purpose of strength, generally speaking, um, what most folks have decided is that you want to always have full tails. And so at the ends of the pin boards, these are what's called half pins because you only angle on one side and it's square on the other. This is not always the case though. And you see in a lot of older work pieces, um, they used to do uh, half tails rather than half pins. Now I don't see anybody teaching to do um, half tails these days. At least all the uh, YouTube woodworking folks, internet teachers, seem to prefer the half pins rather than half tails. Now I suppose if you're making a box that you're just going to saw the lid off of, The, the half tails might be a necessity or just maybe a kind of an unexpected happenstance. And this is gonna be the inside. So what I'm gonna do here real quick is just kind of chamfer the corners off the tail here and that's going to prevent it from chipping out. What is this? No. So 
Sorry folks, that's uh... That is the cost of streaming from your cell phone. Getting spam calls in the middle of the day. And this is just going to help it fit a little bit better. So it's kind of going to ramp into there. And see this one, I didn't get quite down to my line. That's quite all right. Right now, I'm just kind of fitting these by eye. So. Just kind of looking where it's going to be interfering. We're moving a little bit of material. Not too much. So you do want these to fit tight. It's not so tight that you're actually having to bend the wood. A little bit of compression is nice. So you gotta you gotta have just the right balance. going to clean up the tails just a little bit just to smooth them out Try this again.
And this is how you dovetail, really. You just take a little bit off here and there. See if it fits any better. Take a little more off. Try again. Okay. Now take a good little amount there. Kind of a bit thicker of a cut than I was doing, so. Okay, that one's good, so. There, and both sides of that one, really. I'm getting a lot closer now. It's pretty tight. Just make sure this isn't the cause of our problems. all the fuzzies out of the corner. Tight over here. Feels a little tight anyway. And that was probably more than I should have cut off. If that helps. Back corners on the pins seem to be a bit tight. Yeah. 
if I do it just a little bit of a chamfer in between, that might help some. really slight. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's this pin. And all I'm really kind of doing here is angling the bottom in, so getting a bit of a flare at the top. That should make it easier to fit as it goes down. Splitting so far. And that, my friends, is a dovetail. Now, obviously, we're going to have to plane this down flush but yeah that that will work nicely and this does not look entirely square actually it's pretty good yeah that's square I'll take it You know what, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just set this aside for, for the time being. Let those two pieces enjoy themselves and I'll start on the next one. Now next we're going to have to uh, grab another piece of oak for the diagonal. That doesn't need to happen just yet. And actually... We ought to check our edge or touch it up. Chromium oxide. My favorite of wax suspended chemical compounds. Welcome viewer, if you say hello I'll be able to see who you are, but as of right now I can't tell. I think you may have just missed the, uh, the fitting of our last dovetail, it's about like that and it's, it can go a little bit tighter, but we're setting that aside for now, because before we do any kind of glue up, I have to uh, construct some cross braces or some diagonal braces. But bookends, they uh, they come in pairs, so we're going to do the second one before we we move on to that. Uh, 
I got my good friend the three quarter inch chisel. And we're just cleaning up these pins before we do the fitting. Get a little chamfer on there to prevent uh, tear out or mitigate it at least. around work from the other side I don't think it really matters where you do the uh, the bulk of your cutting either from the narrow side or from the wide side at least I can't tell much of a difference One. Slight little shavings across the end grain. And it's very, very nice to actually see these coming off as shavings rather than just big chunks so you know you got your your blade sharp This is actually going to show that uh, uh, over here. It's kind of hard to tell where the camera is, but uh, trying to see if I can get it to focus properly. Uh, I don't really think you can, but there's there's a bunch of little holes in the end grain that uh, when you when you actually. Um, when you actually sever them properly with a really sharp blade, uh, you can you can see the the end of the grain. So you can see that there's there's really just a bunch of tightly compressed straws almost. 
And it's easier to see on the oak than uh, some other woods, like like maple. I mean, the, the grain structure on the maple is a lot tighter, so you're not going to be able to see as well. And if you're doing anything rough, like if you're sawing the wood or if you if you have a dull chisel or, or even if you're sanding it, you know, you're abrading it, you're not going to you're not going to see that structure like that. So it's kind of neat, kind of neat for me to see. Just really up close how the wood is actually organized itself. And I am fairly confident that me dripping sweat all over this is probably not the greatest way of going about it either. You know, someone went through painstaking process of drying this wood, and here I am, just dripping all over it. Now, this is Home Depot oak, so it's not really the greatest of woods, but uh, and I can't tell if it was kiln dried or not. Honestly, I don't own a moisture meter, which would be helpful, I think. I think that would be a good thing to own. Okay, I need to make just a real quick break to grab a soda. That was not going anywhere. Much better. Right where I didn't want that.
Now we finish it off from the other side. That way we're not blowing out these ends. Keep very tight control of the chisel. Do your best not to cut your fingers. Not aiming for flat here, actually aiming for it to be a bit scalloped. Suki107, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the workshop. Hope I pronounced your name at least remotely correctly. We're just in here today, sweating our face off. Cleaning up some dovetails, trying to get them to fit. And once we do that, diagonal braces, which we're going to be using uh, mortise and tenon joinery. That's the plan anyway. I've never done a diagonal mortise and tenon, so it could be a could be a bit of an adventure. You know, I always like to pronounce people's names correctly. Got a slightly uncommon last name that people like to mess up all the time. That and my first name, uh, it's Stephen with a PH. People call me Stefan all the time, it's a little bit annoying. So I've got to, I'm not so self-conscious that I think everybody should automatically know how to pronounce my name. My last job I used to do a lot of cold calling had a list of people I needed to call up and uh, you know talk to and I had to ask for them by name obviously so I guess it wasn't all that cold calling but you know knew who they were but uh, yeah if ever I saw a name that I couldn't pronounce I would uh, go to a a number of websites like pronouncenames.com or howtopronounce.com and they usually uh, had some kind of pronunciation for for some of the names, not all of them. 
But uh, failing that, I'd like to go to YouTube and just type the name into YouTube, see if anybody actually was pronouncing it on some kind of video. And a lot of them I, I found as uh, sharing names with various soccer players around the world, football. Okay. This one's okay. This one, a little bit on the front. Actually, you know what, let's uh, check my tails first, to make sure I'm good on the tails. This one's not quite straight across. So are you a fan of True Blood? Because that's, uh, that's my first impression. Got kind of bored with that series after the first season myself. Okay, B's going to be up on this one. That is now decided. The tails are theoretically symmetrical, or at least that was the intention, but that actually never works out in practice. And because the pins are measured off the tails, the pin should therefore theoretically be symmetrical. That really, really never happens. At least not for me. That's okay. So I got lots of time and I can just shave these down incrementally. Back, backs of the corners of the pins that are going to give me a little bit of trouble. This one seems almost to be rounded somehow. Not sure how I accomplished that. It's going to come off the front. here so take care of that before that confuses me any further
Now with pine, you can generally just force these things together because pine will compress quite a bit. Oak's not going to play that game with me. This one could use a little bit. I've decided this is not my favorite song, but I'm too lazy to go over there and change it. This is the official Twitch sanctioned playlist. So I can I can safely play all this music without any fear of copyright strikes. And honestly, I don't know if you guys can even hear it. But that's what I got for music. Getting close, getting close. You know what? Uh, these edges I need to take down just just a hair. And that's not safe, so I'm gonna do it in the vise. We are getting closer, I, I promise. It's just one of these things you can't, uh, you gotta be a bit cautious because you can, you can severely damage your workpiece if you're, if you don't approach it carefully. Too many dovetails. I've just split the boards as I was trying to force them together. So I'm going to chamfer the back corners of these. Just give a little bit of a uh, angle for that for the approach. It'll help it fit in a little bit easier and nicer. Just a little bit here too on these guys on the inside. I'm 
because that's an inside corner. You won't be able to see that too easily. All right. Not the moment of truth, but a point of incremental progress. Okay, I'm still stuck over here. There's really light taps with the mallet here. And that's not the prettiest dovetail I've ever seen. But that will work. This one need, does need to go a bit lower, okay. Yeah, it's cut on something. Okay, so it looks like we're flared out at the base, so that's probably what's keeping it from seating fully. And the fuzzy bits don't want to come off today. Away, away, you nasty fuzzies. ledge here that's probably not helping. Ah, this pin's a bit flared as well. Or I guess tapered. Be a more appropriate term. better a little bit okay now so we got two bookends kind of rough in and these will obviously these would probably work well, the thing is, I've done dovetails, so dovetails are not new to me, all right? So I need to do something that's going to uh, up my skill level just a little bit. So, um, what we need to do is some diagonal braces on these. Um, so get some more oak out, and let's see if we can figure out that next part. If this works, we'll be surprised together. Ah, 
That seems to be, I think that's enough. Make it a little bit longer, just in case. Make a little shelf for the saw blade to rest in. And slope towards the uh, straight line, so the natural tendency will be for it to cut straight. And uh, I got to give myself a little vertical to follow as well along the edge. Just to make sure it, st it stays straight. No, oh, that's the dovetail saw. Here's my first. Knocking stuff over, you can't take me anywhere. We are frozen on the overhead cam. Okay. Let's see if I can compensate for that a little bit. Hey, you know what? That's going to take too much time. I'm not gonna bother you fine folks like that, so let's just turn that off. And sorry, this is not uh, the greatest way of going about things. Come on, work with me. I guess it's just gonna be stuck there, sorry. Um, set this to the side. So you will have a stick image on the upper left hand corner of your screen, regrettably. So if you're new here, what's going on is I've got uh, an old cell phone mounted to the ceiling. And it gets really, really warm in here when I'm streaming, so the uh, cell phone has decided to shut itself off. All right, um, I've got a marking gauge around here somewhere. Let's call this two and three quarters. How's that gonna sound? A 
amazingly enough, that is perfect. Now this would actually be the perfect application for my brand new rip saw, which is not brand new, but it is new to me. So this fella right here, but it's not really clean and I haven't sharpened it. And I can see some really dull teeth. You know what? Let's give it a try. Because why not? Let's see what this thing's like before and after. Yeah, that's not good. Tried and true. Good old distant. That's the crosscut. I don't want the crosscut. I don't want the rip cut. There we go. Love that sound. Doesn't always make it, just if you're lucky. I don't like using this so much is because it's a uh, four teeth per inch, whereas that other one um, is eight teeth per inch, so it's going to get a bit of a nicer cut. See if I can't knock these out both at the same time. 
time. And you know what? I'm going to do this the right way. Get a, an actual line to plane to. So these will be two and five eighths thick for anybody who's counting, which that's not me. I don't count. Come on, work with me here. Sorry folks, this is just not cooperating with me for some reason. one at a time. And actually I haven't uh, sharpened this blade in a while either, so. And just gonna hit this with a number four plane. It's not really long enough to justify using anything else. The board isn't. cap isn't closing properly. Anything blocking it? Adjust the blade so it's not taking off too much. Kind of get it laterally centered. And it looks like we're done with music too. Not really sure why that's going that way.
favorite things is the sound the plane makes as it transitions from a really rough cut to a completely smooth edge. Getting flat across. Looks like I need to take a little bit, a little bit more in the middle. So a couple passes just in the middle. Just work down to the line. High on the right side, so I'll take that down a little bit. I'm going to call that close enough. Alright. Now this guy. Now let's just forget all pretense and put it in the vise where we know it actually belongs. Whew. Is anybody else cooking or is it just me? Someday, someday I will have a nice air conditioned shop. With 220 outlets and dust collection and air filtration. And a bandsaw with 14 inch resaw capacity. And bunnies and unicorns. I get to tend the rabbits, right, George? Almost see it. Okay, grain goes this way.
Yeah, I, I, I know the feeling, but the, uh, the temperature does not actually affect the garage. So, while it's 70 degrees inside, it's, um, I don't know, melting point of something. Melting point of me, at least. How are we looking? How are we looking? Pretty even all across. But on this side. And the, uh, in the spring, my wife had this lovely trick where she'd stay up like really late at night working. And uh, because it got cold over by her office, she turned the heat up. And you know, it's already 80 degrees outside, but uh, the bedroom's right by the furnace, so it gets the, it gets first dibs on anything that comes out of the vents. So it'd be like 90 in the bedroom so she could get her office up to up to 75. Was not fun. Back many years ago, I used to live in St. Louis, or a suburb thereof, and still in a third floor apartment. So winter comes, those neighbors downstairs had their heat on full blast, and heat rises. So yeah, I never had a heating bill in St. Louis in the winter. In fact, most of the time we had the windows open in the winter. So the trick here about what I'm going to be attempting is that I'm, I've done mortise and tenon many, many times, but those have always been straight on 90 degrees. These are going to be at a 45 degree angle, so that might be just a little tricky. I'm gonna figure I give it a shot. Worst that can happen is it doesn't work. And then we'll just have to count on the dovetails. Which honestly should be more than adequate. Especially since I actually don't need bookends anymore. Thought I was going to. But it turns out I don't. I need is another bookshelf. Too many books. All right.
What's the plan here? What's the plan? I think the first order of business ought to be to attempt to cut one of these tenons. Um, or yeah, let's cut the tenon first. And what's this? Three eighths. Yeah, three eighths out of a three quarter board ought to be pretty pretty decent size. Get the mortise gauge out, my good friend the mortise gauge. We go way back. Like two years. Try and get it at least close to center before we start uh, poking holes. Half a hair adjustment. It's really, really close. Too far. Can't even see my marks now. You know what? I'm calling it good enough, okay? We're gonna have a, a face, so let's That's the face. Just arbitrarily pick. This is S4S, so it should all be parallel, or at least originally. Um, okay. So I'm gonna need to cut, I think, a 45 on here. Cut a tenon on the 45. So let's give that a try. Hmm. Probably could have done that differently, but uh, too late now. Yeah, you know, the smart thing to do probably would have been to do some research on these before I attempted it.
and there's not a good way of going about this, so no, stay, stay, hold fast. Why are you not holding or fast? you do that? I got uh, stuff coming up, tearing about. Oh man. Okay, let's uh, let's address this because that's going to bother me. That's not working now. This is very, very strange. See if that helps. No, no, it doesn't help. It works that way. Someone's running their weed rack right right outside my front yard. Forty-five. Except, oh man, that did not come out quite as I liked it. do is put up a temporary fence on the shooting board, keep this at a 45, shoot this exactly at a miter, and then I can go from there. 
Um, yeah, you know what? I got a few minutes. Let's see if we can make that happen. entirety of it so that will be an added benefit. So I need to cut it like that. Tickle, thank you for the follow. Sawdust is a wonderful thing to make. Though, to be quite honest, I'm more of a fan of shavings. How's this going to work? Okay, so what I need to do first is cut a 45 on this guy. need to be too exact. In fact, I think I want to make it a bit more acute. Something like that. Folks, you can't tell I'm making this up as I go along. I've got a whole heck of a lot of time left. So, we're doing what we can in the time we have. Okay, so that's there, that goes there, and will you stay put if I hammer you there? something okay. okay so this uh, this hold fast right here is absolutely destroying my bench. great place for it. Okay. Is that 45? That's 45. Okay. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there.
we go. Nice, clean, crisp, 45 degree cut. Pretty close anyway. But I do believe that's probably going to be the last thing we're doing here today in the shop because it's, uh, it's way too hot. I need a break, but oh man. Look at these. Look at these end grain shavings. That's the most wonderful thing in the world right there. But uh, thank you for uh, joining me. Thank you, Tickle, and thank you, Suki, for, for the follows. That really does help me out a lot. Um, if you want any more of my content, I've got my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube channel. Um, recently did a video on making dovetail templates. Uh, so, yeah, check all that stuff out. Um, and again, if you haven't already, follow me. I'm on... Uh, I'm on here every Tuesday and Thursday from uh, 11 o'clock Central Time to about 1 o'clock. So that's uh, that's about the time I have to call it quits and, and give up the internet for the rest of the family to use. But, um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put this to my loading screen and see if there's anybody else I can find to follow because I'm not really good at that with the phone. So I'm going to head inside. But, uh, yeah. Stay tuned, we'll find some other good content.